Hello everyone and welcome to the stream. This is my first ever stream on Facebook Gaming and I am so pumped to go and play some chess. We're all set up here. So let's go live. Let's do this and celebrate. Man, this is so exciting. First ever stream for me with Facebook Gaming. Really excited to get this show on the road. And we are here. Hello everyone, it's Grandmaster Max Sillingworth. You probably saw my arm just phase out of existence. But anyway, let's get into some chess. That's what we're here for. Also going to be checking the comments as well every now and then to see your comments and, you know, give you a good old shout out. Alright, so let's play some chess. I'm going to play some unrated games on chess.com. If you want to play me on chess.com, just go to chess.com play and then send me a challenge. I see we've got a 2150 rated player first up. It'd be really funny if he lets me play the Tromposki. I'm playing the Tromposki against President Tromposki. Which I feel like it might be a pun. Because I see like this Donald Trump image. So I think he's like doing a pun for Tromposki. But anyway, he goes h6. He's letting me take on e4. I'm going to move my bishop back and just say that he's got the doubled pawns. I can attack him moves like e3, knight e2, knight c3. And you know, life is good here. I'm going to play e3. He's going bishop f5. Kind of egging me on to try to attack him with g4, but I think I'm just going to keep the tension. I could go knight to g3 and hit the bishop with a tempo that way. Or I could just play like c4, knight c3, just grab some space. I think that's probably what I'm going to do, just c4. And just say that my structure is more flexible than uh, this guy. Now you might be wondering, well, why is it that I'm streaming on Facebook gaming and not streaming, say, on Twitch like most of the chess players do, or on YouTube? Well, the reason is, this way I can share a little bit of a story, actually, as to why I'm, uh, I'm doing this. So, basically, my favorite gaming content creator, his name is uh, T90Official. He streams uh, games like Age of Empires on, uh, on YouTube, and he used to stream it on Twitch, and obviously did very well for himself. Uh, entertaining guy from the US. At the same time, he sort of got this offer from Facebook to stream on Facebook Gaming instead. And the thing with Facebook gaming is there are a lot of reasons that Facebook gaming is kind of nicer than, uh, than Twitch, based also on my experience actually watching a few streams this morning. Well, the first point is that you actually get 100% of the earnings from desktop users with uh, Facebook gaming uh, as a streamer. Whereas if you are using, let's say, uh, Twitch instead, then they take a 50% cut. That is true. Facebook, they do take a... I believe 30% cut, if I remember correctly, for the uh, for uh, for mobile users that are uh, the donate. But at the same time, you know, it's like uh, well, it's still a lot better than the Twitch one by comparison. Uh, anyway, I guess I'll just go to make sure see if there are any comments. And well, you know, don't be shy, guys. Do make sure to to say something. You know, we are here to have a fun chat and to enjoy our chess. So he's given me the H file, but I kind of want to get in this way with Rook B1. Try to attack his weaknesses, rook b7, and this sort of thing. So he starts with rook a7. I'll throw in a check, just to see where that king is going. And I mean, his vision is kind of solid. I mean, it's true, I have been kind of talking about nothings other than the game while making moves. So, I guess why some moves are not the most precise. But still, I can bring the rook in this way. I can bring the rook in this way. And you see how virtually all of his weaknesses are fixed in place. And fg4 is a very ugly move to have to, to play. Because now my bishop's coming in attacking this guy. Saying as he resigns, because you know, if he goes bishop f5, I'm going to have a rook to h8. Well, I could play another game, but I could also do a little bit of a review. So, because of me deciding to do this Facebook gaming stream, it's not just because of the T90 official. I actually research and I actually checked, well, is there anyone already doing this in chess? Because if you are Twitch uh, users that play chess and Twitch streams playing chess, it's a very saturated sort of market. There's so many people already streaming there, so there's not really a lot of, well, there's a lot of competition, and it takes a very long time to actually get any views. Whereas on the other hand, well, basically, with Facebook Gaming, there's virtually nobody really streaming. The only person who's actually streaming there regularly is this 1600 rate player, Charlie Sardo. Uh, that's Charlie Sardo Gaming, shout out to him. I was checking out his stream, and you know, so I thought, well, if he's you know, doing really well and getting heaps of views, he actually hit over 10,000 followers recently, so congrats to him. They thought, well, why can't I do it as well? Now, to return to his position, you can see it says C4 is a blunder. And I did sort of have a feeling that C4 is probably not a great idea. 
and not in this position. But what should I do instead? That's a, a fair question. So my other idea was to play either knight g3 or knight to c3 at this point. What move do you think I could play? Maybe you can write in the comments below. You can see Andrew saying, thanks for hosting this, Miss Dealingworth. Hoping to get a game against you. Recently attempted to add you as a friend. Yeah, actually, I think I remember, like, in the past, I was deleting some friends from Facebook, and I kind of, like, you know, a hundred names at a time, so I'll make sure to add you back, uh, Andrew. Anyway, uh, yeah, basically, going back to, uh, to this game, then instead of C4, I'm gonna try Knight G3. Although, if they retreat the bishop, I'm not quite sure what it's doing, but it's saying it's actually the best move at this point. I guess my bishop can come to C4, and that's a lot more active than putting the pawn on C4. As for the next key moment that's indicated, it says knight c3 is also a mistake. Uh, I remember, like, I kind of remember what I was thinking because I wasn't talking about chess at all. Maybe I go a3 and then knight c3, just so that there's no bishop b4, because that ended up being very solid for black in the game. I could also play a move like c5, but then maybe get some move like e5 in. So maybe I'm going to try... I have a feeling c5 is best, but I'm worried about e5 and I'm not sure what to do about that. So I'll try and see what it says about this move, whether Injun thinks it's a good idea or not. Yeah, I won in 27 moves. I really didn't expect to win that quickly against the guy, but looks like I did. And Stockfish is spending a long time thinking, saying it's a good move, but that King C2 is the best one, but very similar idea that you want to prepare Knight C3 and not run into kind of an annoying pin as such. Uh, so anyway, that was this game. Let's play another one. I kind of forgot to say I saw that uh, Charlie Sato was doing this game in our after game. Thought you might enjoy it as well to try to improve on my play. So, okay, let's... Uh, yeah, really like C4 always fighting for D5. I mean, it's a sort of move where if you're able to keep that space, you can have a very nice flexible structure. But anyway, let's play another game. If I miss anyone's challenge... Okay, I can see a guy challenging me 5 minute unrated. You know what, let's play him. Uh, maybe this is Andrew, I'm not sure, but okay, let's play... Different opening this time, I'll go e4. So, okay, we have Sicilian. I'm gonna play knight c3. And I'm gonna try to mix up the openings a little bit just to kind of make it more interesting. And this bishop b5 is kind of like an improved Grand Prix attack. Because if they play a move like d6, you now have the option to take. But I should have probably gone knight d4 to try to avoid this structure. Because now I can sort of play an improved Grand Prix attack where black has these double pawns that just makes the structure a lot less flexible in comparison. I'm just going to castle queen e1, and if they castle short, I'm ready to go like f5, bishop h6, and play for a checkmate. As you can see, I play fairly quickly in these games. I want to kind of get as many games as possible in, so you can kind of see, well, to see how I play the positions, and maybe to give you guys more chance to actually play against me as well. So, okay, let's see. Uh, oh, we have four uh, four people. Uh, answers, okay, you put the username in. Yeah, it's great if you to put the username. That makes it easier to see who is who. Now, he's trying to stop me going for the f5 by covering with this, but I could also play e5, and this is why e6 is maybe not that great a move. Because now I've got this pressure against the dark squares, and we can see his bishop on g7 is a long way from defending that pawn on c5. And with some plan like c4, bishop e3, I'm eventually going to win that weak pawn on c5, because, well, his other piece are not really doing anything to stop it. I think I'm going to take the pawn directly, because queen b6 always have queen f2 to break the pin, and, well, it's not really clear what Black is doing. He's got the bishop pair, but because the position's kind of close, it doesn't really do that much for him anyway. So, anyway, let's continue on, see what move he goes for. It's worth pointing out, knight d7's not that big a threat, because they can trade queens, and, yeah, it's just going to be, well, not really doing that much. Uh, but if, the, let's say, the queen was here and then knight d7, then it becomes a possibility. So he goes rook d8 to cover it. And I'm thinking of playing the move b3 or d4 at this point. Uh, I think I'm going to play... I'm going to play b3 in this position. Because, well, I just want to be able to move my bishop without that pawn on b2 coming under fire. That's uh, my idea here. And also, I know to actually have a new, uh, a new page that I've created with this one. And also, hello to Marlon as well, uh, who's just uh, said hi. So basically, the page I created is called, uh, well, GM Max Sillingworth. Some of you may know I actually have another page, uh, Illingworth Chess, that has a lot more uh, people already who have uh, who have liked or followed it. So you might wonder, well, Max, why aren't you just using this page? The reason is that that page has some restrictions, because I had someone running ads for me in, like, last year, but he made a bunch of mistakes that basically led to 
my ads account getting uh, getting blocked there. So now I'm using this one and kind of starting from scratch. Basically, I, when I get to 100 uh, page likes, it actually leads to a lot of really cool new features where it means you're actually able to donate stars, uh, for example, to the stream and help support the stream in that way. You can see this guy resigned because I'm just going to bring my queen in and he can't really stop me playing queen g7 mate in a good way. He can play with like h5, but then you're weakening the king even more and, and it's still very bad. So not too early to resign. Okay, let's find a new opponent to play against. Uh, let's just do an automatic seek so we're not waiting too long. Got an 1800 guy. I don't know why, but I keep getting the white pieces and... Yeah, against the English, you don't want to play d5 like this, because now the queen is getting kicked around, and compared to a Scandinavian, I'm just getting much more space in the center. Like, if the pawn on c2 is blocked, it's one thing, but here I just traded it off, and I just have better development and better central play. So, castle, castle. I guess I expect him to castle, and I might actually go e5 at this point. Now, the reason for e5 is I want to go queen e4, and try to set up a queen h7, mate. And if they play, well, knight d7 is actually probably a mistake, unless his idea is to meet queen e4 with f5, maybe. But I think that should still be pretty good for me in the worst case. But I do wonder if I can build up the position a little bit first. You know, maybe, uh, now I could try to play bishop e2, queen d, uh, d3. The reason is after queen e4, f5, he is going to gain a tempo on my queen. And while the position I think is still much better for white, it's true that this is, well, this could be worse. Well, I guess it could be worse uh, in it, while well, I'm taking a pawn with check. Actually, it's not even the worst part that he's losing a pawn, but actually I have a really strong move. You might like to write in the comments to see if you can uh, if you can find it. So Andrew asked a question, isn't there rook eb8, then queen c8 and queen f8? I don't have a reference to the previous game. Yeah, this is true. He could have defended that way. It wouldn't have saved the game, but yeah, he could have tried to play on. But yeah, now knight h4 is the key move where I just go knight g6 and... Yeah, he just can't really avoid this fork on the knight and the, on the king and the rook in a good way. Now, actually, with this, uh, well, with his position, yeah, there's not a lot, a lot he can really do. Probably his best move is resign at, uh, at this point. Uh, well, something else I was going to share as well, actually, uh, with, uh, oh yeah, it was about the, the music, actually, where, I know, like, this one I have kind of an endless loop. I was so worried if I did a playlist that it would... Basically, it would just sort of freeze all the time and it would be kind of an unpleasant experience. But you know what? Since it's the first stream, let's try it. Maybe add a little bit of variety and see what you guys are, what you guys think. So there's another royalty free song from, uh, from this channel, royalty free music, which I literally just looked up before, like the five minutes before the stream. It's kind of funny, like I didn't even see his move, like he resigned because I was just sitting there and thought, oh no, I just blundered to the GM. So yeah, sometimes that's why I find like when I take a few seconds pause and don't move in like one second, they just resign because they think, oh, now he's sinking. I don't know why, but anyway, do we have any challenges? Okay, Dubov Shadow challenged me to a game. So this is Andrew, and we put his name in earlier in the stream. And I was thinking like with the stream, I was looking at the kind of numbers, like I saw that it's kind of different to Twitch because on Twitch, let's say if you have like 50 streamers, it's like, okay, then no one's really watching. But if you have, let's say, uh, Let's say if you have like 50 on here, it's actually like a lot better uh, by comparison, just looking at what other chesses were doing. Now, Bishop D3 is not as effective when I haven't played D6, because I can now go like E5 and D5, and considering what move what I want to play that. I think I'll just play D5 directly, just to keep my options open a little bit more. E D5, I might go Queen takes D5, or Knight takes. Kind of like Queen takes D5, just to sort of hit his Bishop, just appeals to me for some reason. So he plays E5, I think Knight G4 is a good move. And queen c7 and... Okay, it doesn't technically win a pawn, actually. Because he can go bishop to b5. But what I can do is play c4 first. And then after bishop c2, queen 70, it would kind of have to go bishop a4 to save the pawn. But it's also a lot less harmonious than putting a bishop on b5. And in that case, I can even play bishop f5 and just put the bishop on d3. And I think that's what I'm going to do. Because it also creates a big threat of luring the queen I can take. Uh, so he's going because if takes, he can take, and I won't be able to win that pawn because of the pin, but what I can do is I can play this bishop d3 move first. Kind of forcing the queen back, because otherwise I was covering all the other squares. And now, unfortunately, this is just not really a playable position. So if you want to play the Alapin, you should really go e5 and play it this way, just a lot more directly, because this slower step just doesn't work as well when black can play d5 in one go. Uh, so 
now it's, yeah, just very difficult position for White. Though I expect he'll play on, because... It's only I can't actually realise I was sort of reflecting earlier today. I remember when I used to do streams, the players would just kind of play on and on, and sometimes I'd get a little bit frustrated, like, you know, why aren't you resigning? But then it occurred to me that actually some people might want to see, like, okay, how does the GM actually beat me from this kind of position? So when I sort of thought of that, I was a bit less uh, annoyed about people refusing to resign against me in unrated games. But anyway, I mean, now I'm up a pawn, and I'm going to play, like, E5, E4 sort of things, and... You know, I just have a massive space advantage. Even if I wasn't up a pawn, it would still be probably a winning position for black, in fact, for uh, this reason. But yeah, that's kind of why openings are somewhat important to know, so that you can, well, basically get into a good position and not just find yourself losing out of the opening, as it were. If you remember when I was a kid, I used to study opening theory just so much, I just really geek out on it. Uh, I could play Castle's Long, or I could play Rook to D8. Castle's Long is probably the better move. It does give him some options to try to attack my king, but with my bishop covering the rook, I don't really see that happening. So I think this is fine. So he plays b3, this ain't uh, probably his best try. I think I'll just go e4 and just kind of clarify the position or quite early. My idea was after knight d4 was to take initially, but I'm even wondering if it's better maybe to just keep that tension and not let his pawn get to d4. Because even though it's doubled, it would give him a little bit of space in the center, so it might be better just to kind of leave it as it is. It's one important thing to keep in mind in chess. You're not always forced to uh, forced to take. So, uh, Alvin says, I see you on Facebook. Definitely share. We'll share the link. Yeah, thanks. I really appreciate it. You know, definitely every share really helps more people to see the stream. And, you know, one thing I really also on a personal level when it comes to, like, Facebook gaming, I said in the stream, there really aren't many people who are streaming on Facebook gaming for chess and definitely no other title players as far as I know. Uh, perhaps there's someone who I don't know of, but at least when I checked the recent streams, there was hardly anybody. I think it's a really great way to bring chess to more people on Facebook and really kind of share our love of chess together in a way where if it was on Twitch, there's so many people that we were you know, just sort of all lost in the, uh, thinking of a good metaphor, all kind of lost in the maze or, you know, lost in the swamp of all the different people. But here I think you know, I can really reach sort of more people quickly and yeah, looking forward to seeing you guys come back for later streams as well, because this is something I'm planning not just to do as a one-off, but I really hope to make this sort of thing a regular kind of stream where I have a consistent schedule and really can you know, start bring some great chess and help you guys improve. Actually, here there's a nice tactic. I'm just pausing a little bit so you can try to find it for yourself. Put it in the comments as well if you what move you would play if you were black here. I think my stream might be freezing a little bit at times. I'm not so sure. But, because I know my neck connection, like, is not perfect here, but I think it will be good enough. But yeah, now I play queen takes g3, because he can't take. Because now the pawn is pinned to the king by the bishop, and now I'm just going to go for queen takes g2, mate, which he doesn't really have a good way to avoid. He can only really postpone it. So bishop a3 I take, and thank you. So, uh, yeah, this was this game here. Uh, also, another nice thing as well about... Uh, about Facebook, like with the gaming is that, well, when you sort of play chess, it actually shows your live stream. So that means maybe some of you who are watching, maybe you came across this because you saw it like in the, you know, in Facebook gaming, like you went to Facebook gaming and you saw, you know, that I was the one person doing the live stream as such. And so you can see I'm playing the Karakhan defense. He played this unusual knight g5, c5 rather than the usual knight g3. But now I just get a very solid position like knight f6 and I can just play the normal Karakhan moves. And b6 might look slightly weakening, but it also kind of helps prepare c5. Now the normal move would just be to take, but I'm actually thinking of playing bishop g6. It's an idea I'm borrowing from the London system, which is one of my favorite openings for white, by the way. Where that is if they take, you take back with the pawn and you get this nice open h file. So he's keeping the tension as well, so I'll play bishop d6. I'm going to castle short in this position. Now, we could consider a move like c5, trying to stop c5 by me, but that also kind of uh, gives me the d5 square. So, I'm going to play c5 myself, though, just to kind of keep uh, keep his rook sort of out of play, not letting him to open the c file, as it were. And in general, in the Karakhan, once you get in a move like c5, your position is just very comfortable. So, anyway, c5, see whether he takes, whether he does something else. So, he takes, now I get this structure. Okay, it's true, I don't have the rook on the h file, but it's still perfectly fine. The only thing with these positions is you do have to be a little bit patient, because obviously, you know, white doesn't have any real weaknesses in this position. 
And, uh, well, I play Rook 8 at D8. I did a little misclick there, but I think we're all, all good and back again. Uh, so, anyway, the reason I played Rook 8 D8 and not Rook F D8 is I want to, at some point, play Rook E8 and try to push in the center with some E5, E4. That's going to be my main way to create imbalances in this sort of structure. So I play Rook E8, putting the Rook opposite the Queen. That also discourages them playing moves like D5, because I can take and sort of open things up in this way. Actually, I was wondering, like, hasn't this song changed already? But yeah, it's because it's three minutes. See, so, yeah, like, I'm having so much fun already losing track of time, guys. So, okay, let's uh, see what else we have. So, Knight B to D2. Like, this is why the Knight wasn't so great on, on D2. I might play a move like A6, and A6 probably wouldn't be the first move of the engine, but the idea is now I can take, and I can go E5 without having to worry about some Knight B5 if he takes with the Knight. So it's a nice way to kind of unbalance the position and give, get some chances. I have a feeling he's probably going to play bishop c3 and try to go b4, but he puts on e3 instead. And now I go e4. Now you know, he's starting to get things rolling. The party is starting because the knight can come in as d3 outpost. And that really gives me very strong control over the position. I might even be able to play with like knight 5 and knight f4 and try to bring the piece in the attack. But I have a feeling maybe the best move is to play bishop c5 at this point. And just kind of hit this knight while he isn't really covering it. He probably goes knight b3 to defend. And, well, I have an interesting decision to make in that case. Quite a few tempting options, like knight f4 is one. Bishop e3 is another possibility I can go for. I can even just keep the tension let him take, which I'm really tempted to do. But I've also noticed that knight e4 might be a threat at some point. So I think I'm going to play... I'm going to play knight to f4 in this case. And just not have to worry about any knight e4 rook d3 tactics. And... Well, the knight is quite well placed on f4 because he can't really kick it away from g3 because of h3 pawn, but now I get my queen or more active square. And yeah, he can take... I probably should have played rook d1 first because now he can play rook d2 and fight for the file. Knight d5, honestly, not a move I was thinking of, but it's sort of a reasonable enough idea. I might play queen e5. Uh, unless he has rook d2, maybe he can do something like this. Because if I take it, it sort of activates his rook, but I don't think I really have anything better at this point. It's true, I'm not playing this game all that great, but rook d5 probably is also not his best move either. I'll take... I think I'll put the queen on d6, and if he goes queen c4, I kind of have this little problem on c uh, on c5. I'm actually thinking of playing e3 and just sacking the pawn to open up his king, and, you know, it's a blitz game, so... One way to create some practical problems for him, at least. So, fe 3 I will take with the rook, and, you know, rook here, queen rook here. Actually, this game... Today, actually, is like the day after I did a really long uh, sleep reset because like, I have some, some problems really sleeping properly because my brain is way too hyperactive all the time. And what happened is like I was kind of was sleeping at really crazy times. You know, with the COVID lockdown, maybe you found this well, like your sleep schedule just went completely haywire. Uh, Rookie 2 is a good move by him as well, I think. But anyway, basically, that's kind of what happened to me that uh, my sleep was really crazy. So what I do is I do these kind of sleep resets where I just basically force myself to sleep at a very particular time, even if like, I have to waste up nearly 24 hours to do it. So yeah, that's why like, I'm probably playing a little bit drunk at this moment, but I guess, you know, it shows that grandmas can also make mistakes, especially when they're not sleeping properly. So he goes queen d4, try and go for perpetuals, and I mean, the ending is a theoretical draw at this point. I'm only up one pawn, and oh, it's on one side of the board, it doesn't do that much. But you know, I'm going to dirty flag this guy. I mean, that's how you... Some just have to win in blitz, where you... A opponent just plays good moves or you just don't play very well and if you play fast a bit faster than him it can allow you to win if you both play like somewhat equally well in the game so that's what i'm going to do here queen f2 and i can even go queen g1 maybe and try to just annoy his king like this i don't know if it actually does threaten anything but you know, i'll play f5 and just this here to so queen d5 i might go queen f1 It'd be really nice if I could somehow win a pawn, but it's not easy to do. Like, f4 is one idea, but it doesn't even really threaten anything. So let's just keep checking him. Okay, now this actually is kind of working, I think. Because I have the option of playing f4 if I want to. Or I can even just go into a pawn ending, which I don't have time to calculate. So I'm just going to go king h6. And okay, now I'm pretty sure this is working. I obviously don't have time to calculate deeply, but the point is that I'm just in time to grab this guy. And my pawn just queens, and I basically just win. So he resigns. But okay he played quite well. Now you might see this thing here called the Crystal League where with the Crystal League what it means is like it's this different new leagues feature. Actually my YouTube channel a bit earlier which I do have linked in the description to this video. 
And basically, yeah, the way it, uh, the way it works is, you know, you, uh, if you join the beta program for chess.com or you just wait a few weeks, you're going to see this leagues feature where you basically are put in with 50 other players. And you get trophies for each game that you win and you get more trophies depending on what time control you play. So I'm kind of doing the leagues and the lowest league is the Wood League and the highest one is the Legend League. And as you can see, I'm up to the Crystal League now. So there was only one mistake in the game on my part. I'm not going to analyze it, but I'm just going to play another one. And just give you guys also a chance to, well, to challenge me if I don't get a game quickly. So uh, anyway, comments as well. Yeah, Andrew said it was a terrible opening for him. Yeah, like I said, in that Alapin, the general principle, when playing Alapin, so as you want to meet knight f6 with e5 and then take the center with d4, and, and that just works a lot better. It's taking a little bit of time to, to get a game. You know, sometimes it can take a while to uh, find an opponent as such. People on chess.com, but obviously not all at the same time. I'm going to mix it up a little bit, play the move knight to f3. The music, it's gone a little haywire for me. Which is kind of annoying, but I can uh, I can fix it. But like, the thing is, everyone kind of goes in slow motion at some point. So yeah, like uh, so I normally take like a millisecond. It takes like twenty seconds to do when I'm streaming. But if I click play, I think this will uh, this will. Work. I hope it works. So I'm staying a long time on these early moves. You can tell me with the knight f3 c4 move order at, at a high level. Players normally use this move order to try to transpose back into a d4 opening, but try to avoid some other openings like Nimzo Indians. Grunfeld's Felds and all this stuff. Now Black's up here is very passive because, well, I'm just able to take the center completely for free, and that's not really something you want to let the opening without a reason. Okay, I think the music is good. Again. Yep, looks like it is. I was a little bit nervous that two songs would play at once and I'd give you some screeching break for the day. So anyway, okay, let's uh, see how he plays. So E5, and you know, even though he's messed up the opening, it's not actually that bad for him because I mean he can. For example, play like knight b4, kick my bishop away, or go a5, and then he gets a somewhat sort of respectable Bogo Indian or King's Indian type position, where, I mean, he should play for the f5 break or maybe c6 or plan b. The reason that he should have played a5 and then knight a6 is that it would have avoided me getting this very nice pawn on b4 that just sort of leaves the knight looking very silly on a6. And obviously, I don't want to take and help his knight get to a nice outpost. So he goes b6, I could go h3, or I could move the knight around instead. I think I'm going to play h3 first, because, well, whatever he does, h3 is going to be kind of useful. And yeah, now I can even play like knight to, might even go knight d2 potentially. I'll go bishop b3 first, because I want to go knight d2, but I don't want to shut in my bishop when I do trade the bishops. Now, if you're wondering, well, why is it a good idea to trade this bishop like this? Well, the reason is that if you look at the pawn structure, my pawns are on the light squares, and his pawns are on the dark squares. So now my bishop is the good one and his bishop is quite passive by comparison. And now the plan I think is just going to be to just steadily expand on the queen side, but I do want to be a little careful with the move order. I really want my queen on, on a4 actually, but I'm going to play rook c1 first and then bring the, the queen. I think this is going to be the more precise way. But I think I missed an opportunity maybe to win a pawn with queen a4 earlier, but yeah, now he's avoiding it and the position is sort of where you know it's better for white, but finding a plan requires a little bit of finessing and a little bit of skill. But definitely the fact that I trade off this bishop kind of helps. Yeah, knight seven's a good move. He wants to go f5 or bishop to g5 here. And I can't really avoid bishop g5 either, which is sort of annoying for me. Maybe I go knight to e2. It feels like I'm drifting a little bit in this position, but I do want to try to do something about this move. Yeah, bishop g5 is a good move. Yeah, guys are at like 1600, but he's playing a lot better than it after... I sort of shake the opening and really punish it in the best way. And well, now position is quite okay. And also I'm a bit low on time. So yeah, sort of not really playing this very well. Maybe I go queen f1 and f4 because his knights aren't really in a good position to go to e5 outpost after these trades. So this might be a good reason just to go for it at this point. And you know, if I can swing my piece over to the, to the king side, his king could actually be kind of weak. Now, b5 is a very interesting move. I think I'll just ignore it with f5 and try to create some weaknesses on the on the king side. You know, I can go knight h5 if I want to. Or I can even play some move like rook a3, which might actually be even better. Just showing that that knight is not so well defended. And because the rook is no longer pinned, I'm actually friendly with f5 now. See, we've got five viewers. So thanks, you guys, for staying and you're not being distracted by your...
notifications. You know, I can uh, can relate to it. Because there was a time I was like using Facebook where I was trying to do what's called like organic marketing, where you, know, you try to basically get like uh, connect with people individually or like with different posts. And it would just like take up so much of my time that I would end up almost no time to actually, you know, actually help people improve their chests as such. So it was kind of like not really ideal. But this way, you know, I can sort of you know, do a stream and you can all learn from me at the same time. Just a nice sort of group learning experience. So Queen F7, I'm going to play Knight C4. If he takes, I take back and my knight gets to a better square. And I also gain a tempo on the king, which is quite handy. Now, once again, it's a sort of position where it's kind of funny. His name is MI Fortress and he's trying to create a fortress right now. So at least he chose an appropriate username as such. But okay, Rook A5, he probably goes Rook B8 and... Now it's up to me to find some good plan. I'm thinking rook c6 and just try to pressure this way. And yeah, he's going rook d7, trying to go for knight d4, but my knight is the one piece not doing a lot. And now I need to play a lot faster because I've been talking instead of moving and as a result, I now need to really speed up here. So, okay, let's uh, just focus for this part. The one good thing is at least his knight doesn't really have any great squares to go to. So, uh, yeah, normally I'm totally fine like with... Uh, with like talking, like it doesn't affect the speed of my play at all, but you know, it's a new experience for all of us here, I guess. So knight e3, just keep everything protected. He's trying to make some sort of exchanges happen, but I don't think it's really threatening anything, as far as I can tell. Although I'd I'm not really playing this in the best way. Now he's getting his knights just jumping all over the place, like it's what they call a nightmare in uh, bad chess puns. So knight here. Man, these knights are tricky pieces, especially when you have not a lot of time on the clock. But I think I can just trade off one of them at some good moment, hopefully anyway. Yeah, he's just moving the knights back and forth. He's not really doing that much, actually, in uh, in reality. Okay, let's uh, keep the pressure. Okay, I think I blundered. I missed it. Rook b5. I only saw it too late, but, you know, we uh, we make the best of it. Man, this guy is actually playing quite fast. Like, normally 69 just don't play this quickly. Maybe I have to pre-move. That might be the way to just pre-move everything and win. Sounds good to me. Okay, so pre-move. Actually, I'm sort of lucky I'm not losing this somehow. I'm lucky that my pawns here are, are just fast enough. Actually, I don't even need the king to support them. So that's quite uh, quite handy. And okay, now, now it's all good. Of course, when you're playing this, you don't want to stalemate their king accidentally. But as long as you're somewhat careful, it's not going to happen. So okay, this game you actually played quite well. Or I played quite badly. I guess checking for mistakes will tell me. I'm guessing five mistakes on my part. Yeah, four mistakes, four blunders. Okay, I'm actually going to review this game because I didn't really understand how it was very well in this game at all. So maybe it's something a learning point for me as well as a learning point for you guys. So okay, let's uh, see the game. Absolutely horrible cap score for this game. But I don't really have the excuse. I might as well be like drunk with the way I'm playing. If I was completely drunk, this would be how I would play chess. Okay, let's start the review and swallow my pride and not... Uh, Beat myself up too much over playing like an idiot this whole game. So okay, at least the opening seemed to be okay, but it was around here that I started to sort of drift quite a bit. So yeah, 92. Says I have a winning move. Okay, it's obviously not, I think, a winning move. It's going to be a winning strategic idea. I mean, maybe I can play B5, A4, A5. I didn't want to do this because I was worried it would type the board too much, but maybe it's not the worst idea in this position to go for. I mean, we'll find out soon enough. Okay, so it says it's not the very best move. The other move I was thinking of was playing something like knight b5 and queen a4. And it does actually look kind of annoying. Because if he has to go knight b8, I can then play bc5 and knight doesn't get to the outpost. Saying not the best move, but not bad either. I mean, unless the move is b takes c5 and you just don't care about the outpost. But that just feels totally wrong to me. Uh, but let's try it just to the sake of it. Yeah, it turns out just a mistake. Okay, I give up. What's the best move? It says queen g4. Four was the first move I was thinking of at this point, but I didn't play it because I thought after the takes I could go for some fortress, but probably it's not the case. With the queen's trade, I can definitely expand on the king's queen side a lot more easily. The pawn g4 also kind of stops f5, so it does kind of make sense. Okay, so let's go back to review. Whoa, the power just died on me. You've got to be kidding that I do a stream and then I have a blackout just as this happens. I mean, what are the odds of that? Like, I haven't had a blackout for several months, and then this is what happens. You've got to be kidding me, man. You've got to be kidding me. Part of my internet's just completely dead, right?
Wow, what are the freaking odds of that happening? What are the odds? Well, that sucks. I guess I have to stop the the stream. Unless it comes back. I'll give it a minute. And if it doesn't come back, well, we'll just start end this here. Man, it's so annoying. I want to use this for YouTube as well. And now I can't because it's stupid blackout. FML, man, FML. Fuck my life. Seriously, man. You gotta be fucking with me. Complete fucking joke. <laughs> 